they will start. We don't know how the day will go. We are in, but I'm ever mindful that we're right on the brink of a new year, but we are not guaranteed to make it. There's still some road and some time to travel at this time. And, and yes, Sister Barbara, I, I like those words, even in the midst of it all. We thank you, Lord. It could be strong and it could be rain. It could be freezing, it could be sweltering heat. But even in the midst of it all, in the midst of me getting confused, in the midst of me going right when you told me to go left, even in the midst of me not doing what you say, Lord, you kept us. So, Lord, we thank you. At this time, can we have?
Reverend Osbrooks, Brother Burks, Sister Osbrooks, right after church for a few minutes. But I believe right now it's really time to seek God. It's really time to seek God. Thank you. 
wind shall speak of the mighty, of the terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of the great goodness, and shall sing all the righteousness. But I like how you conclude it. Mama.
We ask you to grant our path for more wisdom and more knowledge as we go into 2024. We ask you for more, 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 more love. Not only here in St. Philip, but all over the world. In our homes. In our, our jobs. We ask you, dear God, that you would catch all of us by the ring of our minds, dear God. That we will be better Christians in 2024. I want to be more like you and less like me. I want to be able to carry your word, but also do your word. I want to live your word. So many of us get off to a good start here, God, then we start slipping. But as my feet start to slip, catch us here, God, and hold us and let us not fall when we forget you. Strengthen all of us, dear God, that we may be able to tell someone there is a true and a living God this morning and his blessings reaches and touches. Please, let have mercy. And then, God, when we have done all that we can do and we have prayed our last prayer, Please, Lord Father, give us acceptance. For it's in your Son, Jesus' name, that we pray. The things that we should have prayed for, but we did not mention it in this prayer. Please, Son, have mercy. And say thank you this morning. Give us all the we may have been good. In Jesus' name we pray.
We're going to pause in prayer. We're going to pause in the greatest, greatest and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Knowing that He brought us from a mighty long way. Oh, yes. And it's all right to praise Him this morning. I don't to worry about your neighbors and I don't worry about nobody sitting next to you.
for your hearing. We ask that you stand for the reading of God's holy word, Psalms 30, stanzas 1 through 5. And it reads thus, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry unto thee, and thou hast healed it me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endured for a night. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. The grass withered and the flowers fed, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Just for a few minutes, if we had to tag this, we would just simply say, what, what's, what are you expecting for 2024? I did recently did a research, my sisters and brothers, to find five most popular resolutions that been made every year. You know, this is the time of the year where we make New Year resolutions that we start in January and probably don't fulfill it in the end of January. We'd be done stop and went about something else. But the first one, the fifth one, was to take up a new hobby. The fourth one was to make more money. The third one was, uh, most popular resolution was to improve relationship. The second one was to stop smoking. And the most popular New Year resolution was, you guess it right, to lose weight. <laughs> How many of us have made that year after year my New Year resolution is to lose weight. Well, this reminds me of a story about a woman who walked into her master bedroom and saw her husband standing on the scale, waiting himself, suck, stuck in, sucking in his stomach. The woman thought to herself, if he thinks that sucking in his stomach is going to make his weight less, then he is dumber than I first believed. So she sarcastically said to him, honey, bunny, sucking in your stomach is not going to help. He said, sure it will. That's the only way that I can see the numbers on the scale. <laughs> let, let, let us look at our text, if you don't mind. Let's look at stanzas one. We see here David going, giving us three examples of how we can have great expectations for 2024. The first thing that we need to do is to look back over your life. Extol means to lift up, to glorify on purpose. It is an intensive or intentional action. David is saying, I will extol thee, O Lord. In other words, I'm going to praise you with the purpose. Because I've looked over my life. And I've seen what you've done for me. So I have a purpose to praise you. See, see we ought not have to be pumped to praise God. We ought to just take a minute and look back over our lives. And I'm talking about from January 1, 2023 to December 31st, 2023. If you can't find nothing in those 365 days to praise God, shame on you. It's just to help you out. If you don't have something to praise for, that's something I can tell you you can praise for. He woke you up this morning. He closed you in your right mind. He gives you activities of your limbs, and you press your way to the house of the Lord one more time. That's something to praise the Lord about. David is saying, I will extol the old Lord. In other words, I'm going to keep on praising 
Why? Thou has lifted me up. Thou has healed me. Anybody ever been healed? Yeah. Thou has saved my soul. That, that, that the house should have fell down just now. If you saved, that's something God did for you. We couldn't do it for ourselves, my sisters and brothers. So we see that David saying, I will extol the old Lord. I will praise you on purpose. Others may forget you. Others may murmur against you. Others may despise you. But I'm going to intestinally, intestinally, and intentionally praise your name. It's a part of me, sisters and brothers. I can't help but to praise the Lord. And if you know my story, you understand why I praise the Lord. He's done some mighty good things for me, my sisters and brothers. It is as David is saying, I do not need a pep talk from the preacher. I do not need to be fired up. David is saying, I'm going to praise you on purpose because when I look back over my life and I think things over, I remember how you lifted me from the pits of hell. How you lifted me from the ditch of sin. How you, oh Lord, lifted me from the, the bed of sickness and pain. I, I remember how you lifted me from the bondage of doubt and fear. And, and for that I will extol thee, oh Lord. Because when I think of your goodness, I have no choice but to praise your name. Anybody ever think about the goodness of God? Ain't he been a mighty good God? Ain't he kept us 365 this year? Huh? Haven't he put food on the table? Haven't he put clothes on our back? Haven't he given us strength to go on the paper job and make money to provide for our family? God has been mighty good. Right about the name of G.S. Bowles asked the question of his congregation back in the early years. What is praise? The answer he said was the rent that we owe God. Bowles concluded that the larger your house, the greater your rent should be. In other words, the more you get from God, the more you should praise him. The more he has done for you, the more you should sit and praise him. Well, let me help you. You see, some of us have gotten tripped up in our pursuit of prosperity. Two dollars past the board. That we have forgot from whence God has brought us from. Well, that is what happened to David in stanza six to ten. When he said, and in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. You see, the pride of prosperity had caused him to forget his need to trust in the Lord. Because it caused him to boast in a spirit of self-confidence and self-sufficiency. My, my sisters and my brothers, sometimes when we ascertain some things and get a few dollars under our belts, sometimes we forget about who the one is the cause we got. See, because if you take this breath from you, it's nothing you can do in and of your own self. But I stop by to tell you we need it for everything. There's nothing you can do apart from it. So that's why we should praise him. Huh? We shouldn't praise him just when we come into the sanctuary. We should praise him all day long throughout the day. Because he's been mighty, mighty good to us. Well, well, you remember when you were broke? Didn't know where the next meal was coming from. None of y'all never been like that in here, huh? Do, do, do you remember when you didn't have two dimes to rub together to buy your family's loaf of bread? Do you remember when you were lying on the back in the hospital room sick and didn't think that you would ever get well? Have y'all ever been there? Can I testify I've been there when COVID first came out and I caught it? I didn't ever think I would ever come out of the hospital. But 
But look at me now, three years and a half later. Tell me God is good. He's a healer, he's a deliverer. Can I tell you he's a keeper? Remember when all you had to eat was syrup sandwich? Ketchup sandwich? Mayonnaise sandwich? What about two bread pieces of bread and a wish sandwich? I wish I had some meat to put between the bread. Y'all ain't never been there, though. Y'all ain't never been there. I ain't never been there, y'all. I ain't gonna lie to you. But thank God I, 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 I didn't have to be there, and I thank God that I ain't there anymore if I had to be there. Because he's been mighty good to us. He makes provision for his own. That's all I'm trying to say. But look, but look at God. He has taken us from Vienna, Sasha, to pork chops. From pork chops to steaks. From steaks to filet mignon. I can't even say it. I can't even pronounce it. Because I don't eat it. But that's a, a high-grade steak. You, you know what I'm saying? So it looks like to me God just continued progressing us. Higher and higher. And as we leave 23 going into 24, it's nothing but better to come, my sisters and my brothers. But all you got to know that it's not about the year. It's about you. So whatever is wrong with you, you need to ask him to fix it. And we need to be uh, suited and booted in Christ. What I mean for Christ, I live and Christ, I die. Not in words, but in deeds and actions, my sisters and my brothers. We got to get out of the old way. We got to get out of the old things. And we got to be about our father's business. And now is the time. Today is the start. I don't want you guys to make resolutions that you're not going to keep. But I want you to resolve yourself in Christ. The second thing we need to do to have great expectations for 24 is we need to sing and give thanks. Show appreciation. Walk with me in stanzas four. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. So we need to look back over our life, the past. Now we need to sing and give thanks to the presence. Notice that in stanza four we have two commands to praise God. Sing and give thanks. Well, contrary to the popular belief, these commands are not optional. The mode or tense of both words, sing and give thanks, is imperative, which simply identifies these words as an order or a command. To make it simple, this verse is simple, a call to all to show an appreciation for what God has done for you. God has done anything for you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He has done anything for you. David says, sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Notice that David did not say, let all the people with mel melodious voices sing. In other words, he didn't say, everyone that can sing, sing. David said, sing, O ye saints. Of his. That made me ask a question. Are y'all saints? Y'all might have put that on my head. He's been too good for us to set up on him. He's been mighty good. I don't know what you come to do today. But if you ever forget your purpose, all you need to do is come right here and stand us full and obey these two commands. Sing and give thanks. The third and final thing we need to do to have great expectation for 2024 is we need to trust God for the results. We talked about it this morning in Sunday school. Our call on our lives is to do what thus says the Lord. We don't have anything to do with the results. All of that's on God. You just do what he called you to do. So we need to look back over our life, like I said, the past, and then we need to sing and give thanks to present, appreciate, and then we need to trust God for the results, for the future, and our expectation. Walk with me in stanzas five, for his anger 
endure but for a moment. But in his favor is like weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Watch this. I don't want you to miss this. We see here three reasons why we can trust God for his results. Number one, God's anger is only for a moment. A moment. Psalm 103, 9 to 12 says, He will not always tie, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sin, nor punished us according to our iniquity. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression from us. And I can't think of a better reason to extol him. I can't think of a better reason to sing and give thanks. Because God has every right to be angry with me. Oh, wretched man that I am. He has every right. Yet Psalm 103 10 reminds us that he has not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor has he punished us according to our iniquity. And for that we ought to say, thank you, Lord. Second reason we should trust God for the results is also found in stanza five. In his favor is life. Can I tell you this phrase may also be translated as his favor is for a lifetime. Well, some folks say that favor ain't fair. I simply say don't get mad at me because I receive excessive kindness, partiality, and preferential treatment for my heavenly father. It's when you stand with God that you receive the favor from him. Can I tell you, you can't be disobedient and expect God to do nothing for you. But if you be obedient unto God, sky is the limit. If you line up, if you walk with the word, and the word walking in and through you, can I tell you, favor is for you. I mean, come on here. What do you expect a father to do? Give me a stone when I'm home? Do you expect him to give me a snake instead of a fish? Or give me a scorpion instead of an egg? What Jesus said in Luke 11 and 13, well, if you didn't be evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give unto you? You see, we need to trust God for the results. Why? Because in his favor is life. External life through his son, Jesus, who died on Calvary to save you and me. The third reason we need to trust God is for the result is that joy is on the way. That is why I say we can endure for a night, but joy coming in the morning. But before we get to joy, let us spend a minute on weeping. Why? Because we have to go through the weeping to get to the joy. Oh yes, weeping and joy go hand in hand. You cannot get to the one without going through the other. Notice David says in Standard 5, Standard 5, weeping may endure for a night. In other words, count on it. Weeping is going to happen. Weeping, no getting around it. Weeping, no getting under it. Weeping, face it, is going to happen. In this life, you will have tribulations. But he said, be of good cheers, for I have already overcome. So you will have tribulations and trials. But God has overcome them already. So that's how you're able to receive the joy that I'm going to talk about in a few. But what I like best about this scripture is the fact that right behind the word, Night is a comma instead of a period. Which simply means that the story does not end here. You see, the comma leaves room for great expectation. Anybody expecting something new in 2024? Are you going into 2024 with the same mindset you had in 2022? Stop out and let you know it ain't going to work. You got to change the way you think. You got to think, change the way you proceed. Right. Listen as the saga continues, but joy, oh joy, yes. comes in the morning. Yes. Which simply means, yes, you are going to cry sometimes. Right. You are going to have.
have hills to climb sometimes. You're going to have some lonely nights. I want to let somebody know that your help is on the way. Joy, old joy is coming in the morning. Stop by to tell somebody, I know you may have every heart in 2023. You've been through situations after situations, circumstances after circumstances, dilemmas after dilemmas, hurt after hurt. And can I tell you pain after pain? But I need to tell somebody, hold on. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't surrender. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. I don't care if you have to use every muscle in your body or use every ounce of strength you make. Just hold on. Keep the faith. Help is on the way. There's a great expectation called joy. Oh, joy coming in the morning. Before it comes, I need for two or three of y'all who ain't ashamed to stand on your feet. Lift up your hands. Thank him for what he's done for you. Thank him for seeing you through 365 days and 365 nights. Come on, thank him for making a way out of nowhere. Thank him for what he's done, what he's doing for you, and what he's going to do for you.
the most important ingredient that we need is love. I believe if we love like we're supposed to love, we have we don't want to have to love. Because if you love, you can't hear. If you love, you can't hear. If you love, you can't cheat. If you love, you can't steal. If you love, you can't hug another person. So if you get that love thing down, you have the only way. Can I say this? Can I say this? If you love your church, show your church you love it. Monetary gifts and talents, we need it here at St. Philip. Your name is on the road. You are part of the shift. We need working people. And if pastor didn't tell me to say that, I might get on me for saying that. But the Spirit say say that. We need to be about our Father's business. And then we can truly receive the joy of the Lord. We can truly benefit and blessing the God from the Lord. Southern and Grambling is great. But can I close by saying God is greater? Amen. Amen. You are the same my team. I'm never But God is greater. You are the same Southern and Grambling can't save my soul. But God did. So if He saved me, I should serve Him.
Salem Baptist Church. Uh, we're here to wish you and your family a very blessed and happy 